Human migration is the movement by people from one place to another with the intentions of settling, permanently or temporarily in a new location. The movement is often over long distances and from one country to another, but internal migration is also possible, indeed, this is the dominant form globally. People may migrate as individuals, in family units or in large groups. A person who moves from their home to another place because of natural disaster or civil disturbance may be described as a refugee or, especially within the same country, a displaced person. A person seeking refuge from political, religious, or other forms of persecution is usually described as an asylum seeker. Nomadic movements are normally not regarded as migrations as there is no intention to settle in the new place and because the movement is generally seasonal. Only a few nomadic people have retained this form of lifestyle in modern times. Also, the temporary movement of people for the purpose of travel, tourism, pilgrimages, or the commute is not regarded as migration, in the absence of an intention to live and settle in the visited places. Many estimates of statistics in worldwide migration patterns exist. The World Bank has published its Migration and Remittances Factbook annually since 2008. The International Organization for Migration IOM has published a yearly World Migration Report since 1999. The United Nations Statistics Division also keeps a database on worldwide migration. Recent advances in research on migration via the Internet promise better understanding of migration patterns and migration motives. Substantial internal migration can also take place within a country, either seasonal human migration mainly related to agriculture and to tourism to urban places, or shifts of population into cities urbanization or out of cities suburbanization. Studies of worldwide migration patterns, however, tend to limit their scope to international migration. The World Bank's Migration and Remittances Factbook of 2011 lists the following estimates for the year 2010, total number of immigrants, 215.8 million or 3.2% of world population. In 2013, the percentage of international migrants worldwide increased by 33% with 59% of migrants targeting developed regions. Almost half of these migrants are women, which is one of the most significant migrant pattern changes in the last half century. Women migrate alone or with their family members and community. Even though female migration is largely viewed as associations rather than independent migration, emerging studies argue complex and manifold reasons for this. Often a distinction is made between voluntary and involuntary migration, or between refugees fleeing political conflict or natural disaster versus economic or labor migration, but these distinctions are difficult to make and partially subjective, as the motivators for migration are often correlated. The World Bank's report estimates that, as of 2010, 16.3 million or 7.6% of migrants qualified as refugees. At the end of 2012, approximately 15.4 million people were refugees and persons in refugee-like situations 87% of them found asylum in developing countries. Structurally, there is substantial South-South and North-North migration, i.e., most emigrants from high-income OECD countries migrate to other high-income countries, and a substantial part estimated at 43% of emigrants from developing countries migrate to other developing countries. The United Nations Population Fund says that while the North has experienced a higher absolute increase in the migrant stock since 2000 32 million compared to the South 25 million, the South recorded a higher growth rate. Between 2000 and 2013 the average annual rate of change of the migrant population in the developing regions 2.3% slightly exceeded that of the developed regions 2.1%. Migration patterns and numbers related to them The top immigration countries are The United States The Russian Federation Germany Saudi Arabia Canada The UK France Australia India The top countries of origin are Mexico India China Ukraine Bangladesh Pakistan The Philippines South Korea Turkey Romania The UKTA top migration corridors worldwide are, 1. Libya European Union 2. Mexico United States 3. Morocco European Union 4. Russia Ukraine 5. Ukraine Russia 6. Bangladesh India 7. Nepal India 8. 
Turkey Germany 9. Kazakhstan Russia 10. Russia Kazakhstan 11. Cuba United States 12. China Northern America 13. Algeria France 14. India Northern America 15. Philippines Northern America 16. South Korea Northern America 17. Vietnam Northern America 18. China Mainland Hong Kong 19. Vietnam Australia 20. Hong Kong Canada Economics related to human migration Remittances, i.e., funds transferred by migrant workers to their home country, form a substantial part of the economy of some countries. The top 10 remittance recipients in 2017. Forced migration The Global Commission on International Migration GCIM, launched in 2003, published a report in 2005. International migration challenges at the global level are addressed through the Global Forum on Migration and Development and the Global Migration Group, both established in 2006. The United Nations reported that 2014 had the highest level of forced migration on record, 59.5 million individuals, caused by persecution, conflict, generalized violence, or human rights violations," as compared with 51.2 million in 2013 an increase of 8.3 million and with 37.5 million a decade prior. As of 2015 one of every 122 humans is a refugee, internally displaced, or seeking asylum. National Geographic has published five maps showing human migrations in progress in 2015 based on the UN report. Topic. Labor migration theories in the 21st century Topic. Overview Numerous causes impel migrants to move to another country. For instance, globalization has increased the demand for workers in order to sustain national economies. Thus one category of economic migrants, generally from impoverished developing countries, migrates to obtain sufficient income for survival. Such migrants often send some of their income home to family members in the form of economic remittances, which have become an economic staple in a number of developing countries. People may also move or are forced to move as a result of conflict, of human rights violations, of violence, or to escape persecution. In 2013 it was estimated that around 51.2 million people fell into this category. Other reasons people may move include to gain access to opportunities and services or to escape extreme weather. This type of movement, usually from rural to urban areas, may class as internal migration. Socio-cultural and geo-historical factors also play a major role. In North Africa, for example, emigrating Europe counts as a sign of social prestige. Moreover, many countries were former colonies. This means that many have relatives who live legally in the former colonial metropole, and who often provide important help for immigrants arriving in that metropole. Relatives may help with job research and with accommodation. The geographical proximity of Africa to Europe and the long historical ties between northern and southern Mediterranean countries also prompt many to migrate. A number of theories attempt to explain the international flow of capital and people from one country to another. Topic. Neoclassical economic theory This theory of migration states that the main reason for labor migration is wage difference between two geographic locations. These wage differences are usually linked to geographic labor demand and supply. It can be said that areas with a shortage of labor but an excess of capital have a high relative wage while areas with a high labor supply and a dearth of capital have a low relative wage. Labor tends to flow from low-wage areas to high-wage areas. Often, with this flow of labor comes changes in the sending as well as the receiving country. Neoclassical economic theory is best used to describe transnational migration, because it is not confined by international immigration laws and similar governmental regulations. Topic. Dual labor market theory Dual labor market theory states that migration is mainly caused by pull factors in more developed countries. 
This theory assumes that the labor markets in these developed countries consist of two segments, the primary market, which requires high-skilled labor, and the secondary market, which is very labor-intensive requiring low-skilled workers. This theory assumes that migration from less developed countries into more developed countries is a result of a pull created by a need for labor in the developed countries in their secondary market. Migrant workers are needed to fill the lowest rung of the labor market because the native laborers do not want to do these jobs as they present a lack of mobility. This creates a need for migrant workers. Furthermore, the initial dearth in available labor pushes wages up, making migration even more enticing. Topic. New economics of labor migration This theory states that migration flows and patterns can't be explained solely at the level of individual workers and their economic incentives, but that wider social entities must be considered as well. One such social entity is the household. Migration can be viewed as a result of risk aversion on the part of a household that has insufficient income. The household, in this case, is in need of extra capital that can be achieved through remittances sent back by family members who participate in migrant labor abroad. These remittances can also have a broader effect on the economy of the sending country as a whole as they bring in capital. Recent research has examined a decline in U.S. interstate migration from 1991 to 2011, theorizing that the reduced interstate migration is due to a decline in the geographic specificity of occupations and an increase in workers' ability to learn about other locations before moving there, through both information technology and inexpensive travel. Other researchers find that the location-specific nature of housing is more important than moving costs in determining labor reallocation. Topic. Relative deprivation theory Relative deprivation theory states that awareness of the income difference between neighbors or other households in the migrant sending community is an important factor in migration. The incentive to migrate is a lot higher in areas that have a high level of economic inequality. In the short run, remittances may increase inequality, but in the long run, they may actually decrease it. There are two stages of migration for a worker, first, they invest in human capital formation, and then they try to capitalize on their investments. In this way, successful migrants may use their new capital to provide for better schooling for their children and better homes for their families. Successful high-skilled emigrants may serve as an example for neighbors and potential migrants who hope to achieve that level of success. Topic. World systems theory. World systems theory looks at migration from a global perspective. It explains that interaction between different societies can be an important factor in social change within societies. Trade with one country, which causes economic decline in another, may create incentive to migrate to a country with a more vibrant economy. It can be argued that even after decolonization, the economic dependence of former colonies still remains on mother countries. This view of international trade is controversial, however, and some argue that free trade can actually reduce migration between developing and developed countries. It can be argued that the developed countries import labor-intensive goods, which causes an increase in employment of unskilled workers in the less developed countries, decreasing the outflow of migrant workers. The export of capital-intensive goods from rich countries to poor countries also equalizes income and employment conditions, thus also slowing migration. In either direction, this theory can be used to explain migration between countries that are geographically far apart. Topic. Osmosis, the unifying theory of human migration Old migration theories are generally embedded in geography, sociology or economics. They explain migration in specific periods and spaces. In fact, osmosis theory explains the whole phenomenon of human migration. Based on the history of human migration, Degel T. 2017a studies the evolution of its natural determinants. According to him, human migration is divided into two main types, the simple migration and the complicated one. The simple migration is divided, in its turn, into diffusion, stabilization and concentration periods. During these periods, water availability, adequate climate, security and population density represent the natural determinants of human migration. 
For the complicated migration, it is characterized by the speedy evolution and the emergence of new sub-determinants notably earning, unemployment, networks and migration policies. Osmosis theory explains analogically human migration by the biophysical phenomenon of osmosis. In this respect, the countries are represented by animal cells, the borders by the semipermeable membranes and the humans by ions of water. As to osmosis phenomenon, according to the theory, humans migrate from countries with less migration pressure to countries with high migration pressure. In order to measure the latter, the natural determinants of human migration replace the variables of the second principle of thermodynamics used to measure the osmotic pressure. <laughs> Sociological and political science theories Sociology A number of social scientists have examined immigration from a sociological perspective, paying particular attention to how immigration affects, and is affected by, matters of race and ethnicity, as well as social structure. They have produced three main sociological perspectives, symbolic interactionism, which aims to understand migration via face-to-face -face interactions on a micro level, social conflict theory examines migration through the prism of competition for power and resources, structural functionalism, based on the ideas of Emile Durkheim, examines the role of migration in fulfilling certain functions within each society, such as the decrease of despair and aimlessness and the consolidation of social networks. More recently, as attention shifted away from countries of destination, sociologists have attempted to understand how transnationalism allows us to understand the interplay between migrants, their countries of destination, and their countries of origins. In this framework, work on social remittances by Peggy Levitt and others has led to a stronger conceptualization of how migrants affect sociopolitical processes in their countries of origin. Topic: Political science. Political scientists have put forth a number of theoretical frameworks on migration, offering different perspectives on processes of security, citizenship, and international relations. The political importance of diasporas has also become a growing field of interest, as scholars examine questions of diaspora activism, state diaspora relations, out-of-country voting processes, and state soft power strategies. In this field, the majority of work has focused on immigration politics, viewing migration from the perspective of the country of destination. With regard to emigration processes, political scientists have expanded on Albert Hirschman's framework on voice versus exit to discuss how emigration affects the politics within the countries of origin. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Historical theories. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Ravenstein Certain laws of social science have been proposed to describe human migration. The following was a standard list after Ravenstein's 1834-1913 proposal in the 1880s. The laws are as follows Every migration flow generates a return or counter-migration. The majority of migrants move a short distance. Migrants who move longer distances tend to choose big city destinations. Urban residents are often less migratory than inhabitants of rural areas. Families are less likely to make international moves than young adults. Most migrants are adults. Large towns grow by migration rather than natural increase. Migration stage by stage. Urban-rural difference. Migration and technology. Economic condition. Topic. Lee. Lee's laws divide factors causing migrations into two groups of factors, push and pull factors. Push factors are things that are unfavorable about the area that one lives in, and pull factors are things that attract one to another area. Push factors Not enough jobs Few opportunities Inadequate conditions Desertification Famine or drought Political fear or persecution Slavery or forced labor Poor medical care Loss of wealth Natural disasters Death threats Desire for more political or religious freedom Pollution Poor housing Landlord-tenant issues Bullying Mentality 
discrimination poor chances of marrying condemned housing radon gas etc warpole factors job opportunities better living conditions the feeling of having more political or religious freedom enjoyment education better medical care attractive climates security family links industry better chances of marrying see also article by gherkin selik in turkish review turkey polls the netherlands pushes an increasing number of Turks, the Netherlands' largest ethnic minority, are beginning to return to Turkey, taking with them the education and skills they have acquired abroad, as the Netherlands faces challenges from economic difficulties, social tension and increasingly powerful far-right parties. At the same time Turkey's political, social and economic conditions have been improving, making returning home all the more appealing for Turks at large, pp. 94-99. Topic. Climate cycles The modern field of climate history suggests that the successive waves of Eurasian nomadic movement throughout history have had their origins in climatic cycles, which have expanded or contracted pastureland in Central Asia, especially Mongolia and to its west the Altai. People were displaced from their home ground by other tribes trying to find land that could be grazed by essential flocks, each group pushing the next further to the south and west, into the highlands of Anatolia, the Pannonian Plain, into Mesopotamia, or southwards, into the rich pastures of China. Bogomil Terminsky uses the term, "...migratory domino effect," to describe this process in the context of sea people invasion. Other models. Migration occurs because individuals search for food, sex and security outside their usual habitation. Idiro is of the view that towns and cities are a creation of the human struggle to obtain food, sex and security. To produce food, security and reproduction, human beings must, out of necessity, move out of their usual habitation and enter into indispensable social relationships that are cooperative or antagonistic. Human beings also develop the tools and equipment to enable them to interact with nature to produce the desired food and security. The improved relationship cooperative relationships among human beings and improved technology further conditioned by the push and pull factors all interact together to cause or bring about migration and higher concentration of individuals into towns and cities. The higher the technology of production of food and security and the higher the cooperative relationship among human beings in the production of food and security and in the reproduction of the human species, the higher would be the push and pull factors in the migration and concentration of human beings in towns and cities. Countryside, towns and cities do not just exist but they do so to meet the human basic needs of food, security and the reproduction of the human species. Therefore, migration occurs because individuals search for food, sex and security outside their usual habitation. Social services in the towns and cities are provided to meet these basic needs for human survival and pleasure. This inverse distance law 1956, Gravity model of migration and the friction of distance Radiation law for human mobility Buffer theory Stouffer's theory of intervening opportunities 1940, Zielinski's Mobility Transition Model 1971. Bowder's Regulation of Labor Markets 2006. suggests that the international migration of workers is necessary for the survival of industrialized economies. It turns the conventional view of international migration on its head, it investigates how migration regulates labor markets, rather than labor markets shaping migration flows. Topic. See also Topic. Further reading Reich, David Who We Are and How We Got Here, Ancient DNA and the New Science of the Human Past. Pantheon Books. ISBN 978-1101870327. Topic references Topic Sources Topic Books Bowder, Harold. Labor Movement, How Migration Regulates Labor Markets, New York, Oxford University Press, 2006. Bedad, Ali. A Forgetful Nation, on Immigration and Cultural Density in the United States, Duke Up, 2005. 
Chechen, Muhammad. Empires and Walls, Globalization, Migration, and Colonial Control, Leiden, Brill, 2014. Jared Diamond, Guns, Germs and Steel. A Short History of Everybody for the Last 13 years, 1997. De La Torre, Miguel A., Trails of Terror, Testimonies on the Current Immigration Debate, Orbis Books, 2009. Fell, Peter and Hayes, Deborah. What Are They Doing Here? A Critical Guide to Asylum and Immigration, Birmingham, UK, Venture Press, 2007. Hanlon, Bernadette and Vicino, Thomas J. Global Migration, The Basics, New York and London, Routledge, 2014. Howarder, Dirk. Cultures in Contact. World Migrations in the Second Millennium, Duke University Press, 2002 Iduro, Alamvabi East Sociological Analysis of Social Change in Contemporary Africa, McCurdy, Aboki Publishers, 2015. Kleiner Leibau, Desiree. Migration and the Construction of National Identity in Spain, Madrid, Frankfurt, Iberoamericana, Verviewert, Ediciones de Iberoamericana, 2009. ISBN 978-84-8489-476-6. Noor, Jacqueline. Women and Migration. Anthropological Perspectives, Frankfurt and New York, Campus Verlag and St. Martin's Press, 2000. Noor, Jacqueline. Childhood and Migration. From Experience to Agency, Bielefeld, Transcript, 2005. Manning, Patrick. Migration in World History, New York and London, Routledge, 2005. Migration for Employment, Paris, OECD Publications, 2004. OECD International Migration Outlook 2007, Paris, OECD Publications, 2007. Peckaud, Antoine and Paul de Gouctenier eds, Migration Without Borders, Essays on the Free Movement of People Bergen Books, 2007 Abdelmalek Syed. The Suffering of the Immigrant, Preface by Pierre Bourdieu, Polity Press, 2004. Stalker, Peter. No Nonsense Guide to International Migration, New Internationalist, 2nd edition, 2008. The Philosophy of Evolution, A.K. Purohit, ed., Yash Publishing House, Bickener, 2010. ISBN 81-86882-35-9. Topic journals International Migration Review Migration Letters International Migration Journal of Ethnic and Migration Studies Review of Economics of the Household Topic Websites OECD International Migration Outlook 2007 Subscription Service Migration Policy Center Topic Films El Emigrante, Directors, David Ekinrode, John Sheedy, John Ekinrode, 2005. 90 Minutes, U.S., Mexico Topic External links 1911 Encyclopedia Britannica Article IOM.int International Organization for Migration CIA World Factbook, Up-to-Date Statistics on Net Immigration by Country Western Sahara and Migration Stalker's Guide to International Migration, a Comprehensive Interactive Guide to Modern Migration Issues, with Maps and Statistics Integration, Building Inclusive Societies IBIS, a UN Alliance of Civilizations Online Community on Good Practice of integration of migrants across the world migrations in history the importance of migrants in the modern world mass migration as a travel business migration refugees and displacement UNDP provides background and statistics on human migration online dossier on flight and migration by the German Institute for Global and Area Studies